And we begin tonight where we left off last night with the clock ticking on the death sentence the Trump administration has, we hope unwittingly, imposed on Maria Isabel Bueso. This is the most important story we discussed last night, and it is the most important story we will discuss tonight because a life hangs in the balance, all because of an immigration policy change made by the Trump administration, which has decided to refuse to grant any extensions of permission to stay in the United States for medical treatment. That decision has been met by understandable outrage and moral condemnation since the story first broke at radio station WBUR this in Boston this week and then in the Boston Globe and then yesterday in the New York Times. And that moral condemnation is completely understandable. But I, for one, am going to leave that out of what I have to say about this story because we are presenting this story again tonight with an objective. The goal here is to inform you of the news of what your government is doing, but possibly even more importantly in this particular instance, the goal here is to save a life. And the people who have the power to intervene and save this life will not hear the plea for her life if it is hurled at them wrapped in moral outrage. The government officials who can change this death sentence in the coming days cannot be condemned into changing their policy, but they might be persuaded to change their policy if we keep telling them the story of Maria Isabel Bueso. She came to this country when she was seven years old. At the invitation and request of my first guest tonight, Dr. Paul Harmatz, who told Isabel's story to Rachel Maddow last night, Dr. Harmatz needed patients to conduct clinical trials for a rare disease, and he could not find enough patients for this rare disease study in the United States. There's the full formal name of the disease on the screen right now. The professional shorthand for it is MPS6. It causes spinal cord compression and other growth abnormalities. And Dr. Harmitz convinced Isabel's parents to bring her to the United States to help medical research, to help other children who would be born with her condition. Isabel is now 24 years old. She has been participating in medical studies throughout her life in the United States. Her doctor credits her with helping him and his research team make dramatic breakthroughs that have helped people with her disease live longer. Patients with her disease used to live just a bit beyond the age of 20. Now, with Isabel's lifelong participation in these studies, patients can now live longer than 30 years. Isabel graduated from college summa cum laude last year. Two weeks ago, she received a letter saying that if she doesn't leave the country within the next 33 days, she will be deported. And every day between now and her deportation order, we are going to try to find a way to persuade the people in the Trump administration who are, do who are doing this, doing this to this patient to change their minds. Because this is what Isabel's doctor told Rachel last night. You're really handing her a death sentence. It's as if we're pulling the plug on a respirator or stopping feedings um, uh, for a patient that, that needs that type of support. I think it's fair to assume that no one in the Trump administration who participated in this change of policy decision has ever heard of the disease that Isabel struggles with. I certainly have never heard of it. And the disease that Isabel has helped find medical breakthroughs for treatment. They could not have known that they were sentencing Isabel personally to death with that letter. But after this week's news coverage of the story, many of them do know now. We have to try to make sure that they all know in the hope that somewhere we will find a sympathetic ear connected to an open heart, someone who can begin to turn this decision around in the days that are left before Isabel is scheduled to be deported to her death. The politics, politics of governing is far more complex than the politics of campaigning. In the politics of campaigning, you are just trying to beat the other side, and in the politics of governing, you are trying to persuade the other side. And in your own lives, you all know that the tone and vocabulary that you adopt for persuasion is very different from the tone that you bring to open argument. 
If Isabel is deported to her death, if the day comes that we must report at this hour that she has died in Guatemala because she was deported and denied medical treatment to help keep her alive, there will be moral outrage. There will be condemnation. But as long as there is a chance to save her life, we are going to work on this story the way I worked on legislation in the United States Senate when I was a Democratic staff member trying to persuade senators on the other side to change their minds. So we're going to frame our coverage of this story in optimism. Our coverage of this story will be based on the hope that someone will persuade the Trump administration that Isabel should be rewarded for what she has done in this country, rewarded for what she has done for medical research, rewarded for the lives she has saved with her participation in medical research, lives she has improved and lengthened because of her participation in medical research. We hope that someone will persuade the Trump administration to reward Maria Isabel Bueso with her life. And no one is more persuasive in telling Isabel's story than the medical hero who has kept her alive longer than anyone thought possible when she was a little girl in Guatemala, and longer than anyone thought possible when she arrived in California at age seven. And so it is my honor to begin our discussion tonight with that medical hero, Dr. Paul Harmatz who joins us now. Doctor, thank you very much for joining us again tonight. I know your schedule is difficult, and, and, but it is important to you. And so joining Rachel last night, joining me tonight, I think is at this stage possibly the most help that you can bring uh, to your patients. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Lawrence. It's, it's really been um, a whirlwind two or three days, and we're beginning to see some hope. and. Um, the responses that we're getting on the internet, by phone calls, by people I, you know, parents of patients with rare diseases, similar diseases that I take care of, that are, um, you know, asking how they can help, and uh, people calling who we don't know that are just giving suggestions and leaving messages, and um, I think it's really beginning to move people that this is a crisis. And it's a crisis not just for Isabel, but for all of these very rare disease patients that are being uh, asked to leave the country. So I also, I, I'm not a, a hero. I, I, I'm a pediatrician. I've um, followed some great scientists with these studies and um, really want to give them credit. It was the perfect time to bring a unique therapy. Um, we can mention Emil Kakis was one of the inventors of this therapy in the, when it was first brought to the human for MPS-1, and um, he helped move this forward for MPS-6, which was uh, the second disease that was um, uh, had therapy developed in this group. So it, it was a tremendous breakthrough to be able to give these patients back the missing enzyme. And it was a, you know, a breakthrough of, of new science, genetics, um, uh, all of the ability to, to do gene therapy within cells and make this protein that we can infuse each week. And the future is open. I mean, that's the amazing thing is that Isabel is, is healthy and bright and vigorous. And we're within a few years of being able to, to do gene therapy. Um, trials are ongoing in, in Italy for gene therapy for MPS-6. And we just need a few more years to bring this therapy to Isabel so she doesn't need these infusions weekly, that she can make her own enzyme. And, um, you know, it would be, um, it, it'll be a unbelievable uh, tragedy if, if she's taken off enzyme and, and is not able to reach this uh, permanent solution. Uh, I, I have to believe that Isabel is more than just a patient to you after almost 20 years now of treatment and working together. She's been a contributor uh, to your research and I'm sure one of the real friends, important friends in your life. She is. It's a it's a small community. There, we only have 50 to 100 patients in the U.S. Um, I know 
most of the patients with MPS6 over the having worked with this disease for 20 years and I travel around the world and and try to to meet as many patients as I can and they they're they support each other they they know each other especially the young adults that have grown up with the disease and now have hope that they can um, lead reasonably um, long and productive lives and you know, it's it, this is really hitting the entire community, and um, you know, they're you know, it, it takes the wind out of them to to think that that this unique therapy that's keeping them alive is being uh, pulled away from somebody that is doing well with it. So. You know anything that we're doing on with media and with congressional help, and uh, will you know potentially can break through this this barrier and and keep the therapy going. Doctor, if you had a minute with President Trump, what would you tell him about Isabel? I would say that she's a delightful, vigorous, productive person. She's, uh, you know, she loves to dance. She has many friends. She's always thinking about how she can help other people. She, she actually, in, even in high school, was organizing Rare Disease Day to help uh, educate her friends and schoolmates about rare diseases. She spent time in every year she travels to Washington to participate in uh, congressional meetings on Rare Disease Day, uh, lobbying congressmen, e educating their offices. She's she really is a an engaged person. I think that's the way to to say it. And she she will produce many um, positive benefits that we hope all of our children are able to do when they grow up and become adults. And this this would be a tragedy to take this. Um, opportunity to, to live and contribute away from her. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.